Hi mamas, it's Kathy, your yogi mom. And today's practice is for my postnatal mothers. Uh, it's specifically for nourishment. And I know that when after I had both of my babies, I often felt depleted, um, just lack of energy. There's you know so much waking up at night and um, trying, especially with the second one, trying to take care of two, and even with the first one, just trying to uh, get used to a whole new life uh, So this practice is if you can have some time uh, for yourself I know that's hard, but if you can get away for a little bit, it's a short practice to nourish you um, Especially through observation and through breath is what we're going to do and We will be using a blanket today. So that's the only thing that you'll need I go ahead and it could be any blanket. I know this is one of those yogi ones, but you can use anything. Sit on your blanket, find a comfortable seat, and take one foot in front of the other. You can cross at the ankles. You can even extend one leg as well. And then close the eyes, place the hands around the knees or the lap, and breathe deeply into the belly. Slow breath out. And shift back a little with the shoulders until you have a long spine over the hips. And do two more deep breaths this way. Inhale deeply. Exhale slowly. And on your next breath, connect the inhale from the navel all the way into your throat. And on the exhale from the throat down to the navel. And follow this line one more time from the navel to the throat. Throat to navel. Now slowly let some light in, soft gaze through the eyes. And stretch out through the neck. Release the chin to the chest. And stretch the back of the cervical spine. On the inhale, come over to the right shoulder. Stretch to the side. And feel how all the spaces start to open up on the exhale chin back to the chest and inhale opposite side neck and shoulders often uh, get very stressed for moms as you're carrying baby and feeding baby and holding baby now you can continue to move side to side or take a full circle with the neck that's available Look slightly up without compressing the back, the, the back of the neck. Just a slight tilt back and then come all the way forward for a full circle. And if you did complete that full circle, repeat it to the other side. Look slightly up, lift the chin, and then roll over to the other side. Now come back to center and following that circular motion, We'll press forward onto the hands and place the hands on the knees and then come over to your side, to your right side. Stretch through the side body and then lean back. Hold your knees to hold, to hold you as you lean back into the spine and then come back over to the side. So I really enjoy doing this one. This one feels very organic. And we won't count the circles, we'll just move in a fluid way. You'll feel warmth in the spine. You'll get some more blood flow going through the body. And it'll work into the ribs, the abdomen, upper back. And starting to release some of that pent up energy from sitting so much. There's a lot of sitting and caring in these first few months after baby's born and then we'll reverse to the other side so lean forward come over to your left side and lean back and your circles might look a little different than mine that's fine it really is just to feel good sometimes I even like closing my eyes while I do this and do one more one more to the side and then release, come back through center. And take the arms up now. Inhale, extend, lengthen through the back and bend the elbows for eagle arms or Garudasana arms. We'll start with the left arm underneath 
and twist. Another option too is to hold opposite shoulders, but lift the elbows up away from the chest to give you some more space. And now take the forearms forward away from the face and feel the stretch between the shoulder blades. Drop the shoulders. Take a few breaths. Notice how the upper back opens, how the back of the shoulders open. Now unwind the arms, bring them back out to the side, and forward once again, bend the elbows. So we'll take the opposite arm now. Right arm underneath, twist, lift the elbows off of the chest, forearms away from the face, and you can look through the arms. You can also hold opposite shoulders. If you feel areas that are tight or tense, consciously breathe into them. And as you use your breath in these spaces that are, have some resistance, consciously soften. One more breath. Now release the twist, unwind the arms, and take them back behind the spine. Now behind you, hold opposite forearms or even opposite elbows. So you can take the arms back this way, or you reach for those elbows too. What this is gonna do is open the chest and the heart area. I think for all mothers, it's hip openers and heart openers. It's the, what works the most for us because we're always reaching forward for our little ones. This is really helpful to open the front of the body. Stay with your breath. And you can even close the eyes as well. And then one more breath here. And gently release the elbows or the forearms, soften the hands to the side and roll the shoulders back a few times. Draw circles with the shoulders. And then I'd like you just to pause. Close your eyes and feel, observe. We had some postures, we went through some movement. How does that translate for you. Notice any shifts in the body, maybe some shifts in your mind. Now we'll transition onto hands and knees. Coming onto the hands, onto the knees underneath the hips, and you can use your blanket to support you on the knees as well. Bring the wrist right underneath the shoulders and knees below the hips, tops of the feet on the mat. Move into hip circles. So for the, that, you'll press forward, draw a circle with the hip towards the fingertips and out to the side, to the right side, and then back to the heels. And then complete the circle coming all the way forward again. And continue to move through circles. I'll deepen them. You can stay exactly how you are, or you can move all the way back to the heels. It just depends on how you're feeling today. You may want to take it gentle or deepen the sensation. That's always an option. And follow the circular motion. Let it be fluid, light, and easy. And then pause at the center and move in the other direction to balance out. It's okay if you don't feel exactly the same as before. It's very natural to feel tighter and even weaker after you have your baby. It takes a few months or even longer to get back to feeling to normal. So give yourself that time, that patience. Now we'll pause here. 
at the center and move into child's pose. I like doing child's pose with my knees open, but you can also keep the knees closed. Now for prenatal, we always open to leave room for the belly, but now that baby is uh, not in the belly anymore, you can move straight back and keep the knees closed. Sit back into the heels and rest on your hands on forearms or all the way down on the forehead. You can even stack your hands underneath the forehead too. Stay for about four more breaths in child's pose. Feel the hips release, the lower back soften. And make sure that your forehead is connected to something. So it's either connected to your hands, to the floor. If you're on the forearms, that's okay too. It doesn't have to connect. We'll do one more breath. Now release, take the hands forward, come back into your tabletop, and you can move your blanket to the side. We'll transition to downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana, by taking the hands a little bit forward, so now the wrists are diagonal to the shoulders, and curl the toes underneath. The feet will be hip width apart, extend your legs back, and you're in an upside down V. Leave your knees bent slightly so that you can work your way into the posture. And notice how the spine extends. Lift the tailbone and extend through the back of the thighs, chest to the front of the thighs, and heels down to the floor. But don't worry about touching the heels on the floor. Now bend through one knee, the right knee, and then bend through the left. And see if this pedaling motion feels good for you, or hold still. Breath is still very active, and each breath nourishes you and nourishes you with more oxygen and more energy. Follow that line that we did at the beginning of, of our practice from the navel to the throat on your inhale, and from the throat to the navel on your exhale. And now tiptoe your way to the center of the mat with the feet and walk your hands back towards the feet. So you're right in the middle for Uttanasana forward fold. This can be a really gentle inversion that helps to release back tension. And you can relax the hands, let them dangle like a rag doll, or you can hold opposite elbows. As you soften forward, rest the belly on the thighs. Let the chin come in slightly and extend through the back of the neck. So the back of the neck is smooth, there's no wrinkles. Deep breathing. Each exhale brings you closer to your legs, closer to the floor. More release through the spine. Now soften the arms if you have hold of the elbows and gently come up to standing. We'll stack one vertebra at a time, roll through the spine and bring up the head last. Relax through tops of the shoulders and the base of the neck. And let that navel come back. Now roll the shoulders back away from the chest and stand tall in Tadasana. Feet underneath the hips, bend the knees slightly so that you feel the weight of the feet. Soften the tailbone, stack the ribs over the hips, open through the chest. Lift the chin slightly and lift the crown of the head. This is mountain pose. Mountain pose is great to build your courage, your will, and your concentration. Simple, simple posture but so effective. Again, follow your breath from the navel to the throat and from the throat to the navel. Now move with the breath using the arms. Inhale overhead. Exhale down to the heart. And that, repeat that two more times. Inhale, 
extend, reach a little taller. Exhale, draw those arms in. And one more time. Lengthen through the sides of the waist. Exhale, bring the hands back to heart. And stand into Dasana one more time. Now bring the navel back towards the spine. Core awareness. And then we'll move back down to the floor. Inhale completely. Exhale, fold. And now place the fingertips on the floor. One knee at a time comes down to the mat. And we'll sit on the heels. Come over to one side of the hip and swing the legs forward. Now coming down onto the back again, I'll remind for postnatal mommies not to come straight back because that can aggravate separation of the abdominal muscles, but to come down through your side. So before we do that, we'll be using the blanket. Roll it up so that it's really thick and then it's easy for you to grab. So just bring it to one side. We'll be using that underneath the sacrum. So the best way to come down to the spine is from your side. So we'll come down to one side, it doesn't matter which one, and then roll onto your back. And you should do that all the time, not just when you practice yoga, but even in your bed or on the couch or whenever you're coming down to the spine, and that'll help to heal the abdominal muscles after birth. So we'll take the heels closer to the glutes for bridge pose or Setu Bandhasana. Inhale, and on the exhale, lift the pelvis off of the floor and press firmly into the feet. Take your rolled up blanket and bring it right underneath the sacrum. So not the lower spine, but right in that little triangle uh, space right below. So right under the lower back. And use the blanket to support you. If you have a block, that might be a little bit better too. That's a little harder, but I figured that the blanket is softer, so it'll give you some more of a passive stretch. And this is great for opening up the front of the hips, which because we're sitting down so much, or I remember sitting down so much after I had my babies, this will help open the front of the legs, release some of the back tension as well. And it's a soft back bend. If you prefer not to use the support, you can lift away from the blanket and hold it yourself. But having the blanket under there will help you stay longer for about five breaths. And you can bring the palms up or down to the floor. Couple more breaths. Passive back bend. Now to release, lift the pelvis a little bit higher, move the blanket back to the side and slowly lower down. Tailbone touches last. Stay on the spine and enjoy being able to lay back. I know that when you're expecting, you really can't come onto the spine for too long. So enjoy this space right now to be able to be on the spine and relax. Close the eyes and observe how you feel. Notice sensation within the body. And continue to nourish yourself with breath. Inhale deeply. Exhale slowly. Now we'll come back to our seat by coming over to the side and push yourself up with your hands to a seated position. You can sit on the blanket once again. Always good to have some extra space underneath your seat. And we'll move into Janushir Shasana. So feet forward for Dandasana Staff Pose. And we'll take your left leg in and out, like a seated tree pose almost. And then your right leg is right in front of the center for Janushir Shasana. Now you could stay here, or if you'd like a little bit more, bring the hands forward in front of the shoulders and lean into the right foot. Extend through the back, extend through the spine. 
and send your sits bones away from you, behind you. And then wherever you feel comfortable, soften the hands. You don't have to come too deep into this. You can release them on the floor, on your foot, anywhere on the leg. And you may even notice that you're not have the same flexibility you did when you were expecting or when you were pregnant. And that's very natural because the hormone relaxin isn't in the body anymore. And relaxin does soften all the muscles and ligaments, which makes you feel more flexible. So again, be patient. You'll soon be back to yourself. And one more breath. Now walk the hands back to the hips, sit up tall again, and bring that outer knee in and out. Then we'll take the right leg in, bring it out to the side. The right foot is in the inner thigh. Keep the hands back and hold or lean forward. Hands in front of the shoulders, reach, lengthen through the back. And try not to round too much in the spine. Keep your left foot active and rest your hands on the floor or on your foot. Keep paying attention to your breathing. Feel how all the breath washes over all the cells of the body, bringing in new oxygen and releasing what you don't need anymore. One more breath. Now to shift out of this, walk back, back to seated, and bring the outer knee in, both feet out for Paschimottanasana, stretching both legs at the same time. So we did with Janu Shirsasana, we extended one leg at a time. Now we'll have more space to move forward. So hands in front of the shoulders and then up overhead, palms facing one another, lengthen through the spine. If your hamstrings feel tight, bend the knees or you can even roll up the blanket one more time, get a little more lift. And now extend forward, bend at the hip creases, keep active through the feet. And then wherever you'd like to rest the hands, soften them. So anywhere on the legs, the shins, maybe on the feet or the sides of the feet or even on the floor. If you can no longer move forward, you've found that full range of motion. You can also soften the chin. And that'll stretch into the back of the neck, giving you a deeper upper back stretch. One last breath in Paschimottanasana, our head to knee pose. Now soften the hands and walk them back to your pelvis. Sit up tall. Now we'll slowly move to the wall space for a posture that I love. It's called Viparita Karani, or legs up the wall. And it's a very restorative um, posture. If you don't have a blank wall space, you can use the side of your bed or even the side of a couch is fine. Uh, but I'll move here to this side. I recommend coming in from your side just because of what we were talking about with the abdominal wall, uh, helping to heal that area. So come down from your side, well, your left or right side is fine, and then bring the sits bones to touch the wall space. Once they touch, swing the legs over and rest the legs on the wall. You can even bend the knees a little bit too if the hamstrings are tight and place the hands either on your belly or overhead or to the side. 
And this is a great posture to support sleep. I know that's precious these days. So you are probably waking up multiple times in the night, but this posture will help you to stay asleep longer when you do get to sleep. So it does support you in that. It helps you to fall asleep faster and stay asleep longer. And it also helps to stretch the lower spine. It also helps to relieve fatigue from the feet. So it does a lot of things. Now we'll stay here quietly for about five more breaths. So now to come out of this posture, roll to one side in a fetal position and stay there for about three to five breaths. That'll let your blood pressure come back to normal. And also as you're resting on your side, watch how you feel. Notice how you feel again. Come up through your side and back to your mat. We'll end in Shavasana lying on the back. And you can use your blanket too to cover you if you'd like some, some more comfort. You can cover the feet or the whole body. And lay comfortably on the back. Arms to your side, legs relaxed. And enjoy this silence. We'll end here. I'll leave you here. You can rest here as long as you have availability before baby needs you. And know that this part of the practice, the end, Shavasana, is probably the most valuable part of yoga. The ability to be still and to surrender, surrender all tension, all effort. Now I'll leave you here on the spine. I thank you for sharing your practice with me today and for letting me guide you. Namaste.